Number 39. When using a pencil eraser, you exert a vertical force of six newtons at a distance of two centimeters from the hardwood eraser joint. The pencil is six millimeters in diameter and is held at an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal. Letter A. By how much does the wood flex perpendicular to its length? All right. So let's uh, take a look at the picture over here. All right. I have a pencil. The, uh, the pencil is represented here and is being held at an angle of 20 degrees relative to the horizontal. Now, uh, the pencil, right, has an eraser component that's in gold or in yellow here. And uh, it also has then a hardwood component to it, which is represented in black. Now it tells us at two centimeters, right, from the uh, hardwood pencil, excuse me, from the hardwood eraser joint, we're going to apply a vertical force of six newtons. Okay, so vertical force, meaning perpendicular to the horizontal axis. So let me draw that vector in. So that vector is going to look something like this. There's a force being applied right here, straight down. Okay, now that force is six newtons, they tell us. <clears throat> All right, so six newtons is the force that is uh, applied straight down at this location, two centimeters from the eraser hardwood joint. All right, now they want to know by how much does the wood flex perpendicular to its length. So you could just think, right, if you're putting your finger here and you're going to push straight down on the pencil, all right, two things are going to happen. One, there's going to be some flex, right, in the wood here, all right, because you're applying not a perfect perpendicular force, but you're applying a force here that has some perpendicular component to it relative, right, to the hardwood. And it also will have some compression component to it as well, right? So we have to look at each case individually. So first, let's look at the perpendicular flex. Now, first, before I do that, notice how a triangle is created right in here. Okay, there's a nice triangle, right? Now that triangle, I have a 90 degree angle here. I have a 20 degree angle here. And what's the missing angle up here then? It has to be 70, right? So let me draw in 70. All right, now why is that important? Because watch what I'm going to do now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a perpendicular line, all right, to the pencil. Perpendicular line. So here we go. I'm going to put it in black. Okay. So now this, now I'm going to change the angle slightly. There we go. Just that is perpendicular. All right. So now if that is perpendicular, so let's talk about the triangle in here. All right. If that's perpendicular, uh, this line that I just drew, if it's perpendicular, for how many times am I going to say perpendicular, right? One more time. If it's perpendicular to the pencil, what that means is that the angle right here is 90 degrees, right? I know this angle is 70. That means that this other angle in here must be 20. Okay. Well, very well. So let's see now what we can do. So look, there's a triangle that's created in here. Okay. And realize that of that triangle, this is the hypotenuse of that triangle, the six Newton force. So what I can do now is if I want to find the perpendicular flex in the wood, I need to know the perpendicular force. So remember that perpendicular force will be found by uh, finding the uh, force value of this vector right here. Okay, and we have to use a little trigonometry in order to find that. So you know the hypotenuse of this triangle. I'm going to use this angle, all right? Uh, you could use 22, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to use 70. And notice how this side here, the perpendicular component, whatever you want to call it, it's not really a Y component. Uh, well, it could be if you, if you rotate your axis, but I'm going to try to solve um, this Y piece here. Let me just call it, you know, let me just call it this, force of flex, F sub F. Not force of friction there, but force of flex. Okay, so this, the uh, math that I'm going to do here is I know this hypotenuse. I know the angle. I'm going to solve for then the side opposite. So I'm going to use sine. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 70, right, will equal my force of flex divided by 6 newtons. So now I can actually find the force of flex or the first or the I could also call it the force perpendicular. It doesn't matter. That might have been a better name, but... Who cares? 
All right, so sine 70 times 6. So 5.6, so it comes out to be 5.64 newtons. All right, so this is the perpendicular component, all right, to the pencil. Now we're trying to think about perpendicular flexing. What formula on the right-hand side are we going to use? Ah, we're going to use the shear formula, right? So the shear force, which is the perpendicular force, is equal to shear modulus multiplied by the uh, shear deformation, divided by the initial length of the object we're talking about, multiplied by the uh, the um, cross-sectional area, okay? So I just found the uh, force of shear, the perpendicular force, or the force of flex, so that's 5.64, okay? The shear modulus here we're talking about, we want to find how much does the wood flex, so let's go to our table over here and find hardwood. Where is it? There it is. And here's the shear modulus, 10 times 10 to the 9. So it's going to be 10 times 10 to the 9. The shear deformation is really what we're looking for. That represents the uh, flex, all right, uh, divided by the initial length. So the initial length is going to be, so that's a little tricky here, but it's going to be the distance from the point, and look, uh, take a look at the picture, guys. It's going to be the distance from the point at which the force is applied to where the hardwood ended. All right, so that was told to us to be two centimeters. Again, remember I needed it in terms of meters, so just move the decimal two places to the left, so it'd be 0 0.0200. And now multiplied by the uh, surface, uh, not surface, uh, yeah, by the cross-sectional area. Okay, so it says that back in the question, it says the pencil has a six millimeter or six millimeters in diameter. So why don't we draw a lovely circle? Okay, one more time, there's a circle. Here is the diameter, and I said that the, di the diameter is six millimeters. So what is the radius then? Well, you know it's half, so that has to be three millimeters. But remember, we don't like millimeters, right? Because we need it in terms of meters. So just move the decimal, assume it's here, move the decimal three places to the left, so it's 0 0.003 meters. Great, so that is the radius. Now, why did I need to know that? Because I realized that this is a circle, and i got to solve for the area of a circle. So area is equal to pi r squared. There we go. So the area now is equal to pi times 0 0.003 squared. So therefore, the area is, let's see, pi times 0 0.003 squared. So 2.83 2 times 10 to the minus 5. That's in meters squared. Great, now this is the area I need to plug in. So now plug it on in. So 2.83 times 10 to the minus five. Great, clean it up. So 5.64 is equal to, so 10 times 10 to the nine uh, times 2.83 times 10 to the minus five and divide that by 0 0.02. And then we get a value of 1.2. 4, 2, it looks like, times 10 raised to the 3, 7. Times 10 raised to the 7. And multiplied by the shear deformation, that's what we're trying to solve for. So simply divide this value out. 4, 2 times 10 to the 7th. And we find that the shear deformation here is going to be, so 5.64, 5.64 divided by 1.42 times 10 to the uh, times 10 to the seventh. Sorry, I have 1.43. 1.42 times 10 to the seventh, and we get a value of 3.97 times 10 to the minus seven, and that's in terms of meters. So that is the uh, shear deformation or the amount that it will flex by. All right, given that force. Great. Now let's take a look at letter B. How much is it compressed? lengthwise. So guess what guys? If before we were solving for this force of flex, right, the perpendicular force that's pointing down here, perpendicular relative to the pencil, then now guess what I need to do? Now I need to find the force parallel, so this component of the force vector here. So I'm going to draw that in. I know it's getting a little messy there, but actually, you know what? Let me let me redraw. So we got this. This was the 6 Newton force, right? This was 6.00 Newtons. Then I had uh, this component to it, right, I had a value right about there, and then there. That's 
that's close enough, right? This was the force of flux that I just solved for. Remember, this was 70 degrees. And now here I'll call this force of compression. So again, it's just a simple triangle. Now we're going to use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 70 is equal to the uh, force of compression divided by 6.00. So the force of compression will be now cosine of 70 times 6, 2.05. So we've got 2.05 is the force now of compression. Now recall, compression or tension deals with Young's modulus. So therefore, we're going to be using now this equation, Young's modulus. All right, so uh, let's write it out. So the, the compression or tensional force is equal to the uh, Young's modulus constant multiplied by the change in length uh, divided by the initial length of the object all multiplied by then the cross-sectional area. So I found this to be 2.05, right? The Young's modulus now, again, we're still dealing with hardwood, so therefore it's the same value. I mean, well, this, we're going to look in the table in the same place, right? But now we're using the Young's modulus, so that's 15 times 10 to the 9. So this is 15 times 10 to the 9th times change in L, because that would be the amount it's compressed by or expanded by. I mean, it depends if it's tension or compression. The initial length then is going to be the same as we had in the other problem. And the other part, I should say 0 0.0200. 0, 0. And then the cross-sectional area has not changed, right? It's still the same. 2.83 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so clean it up. So we got 2.05 is equal to 15 times 10 to the 9 times 2.83 times 10 to the negative 5 divided by 0 0.02. And now we get a value of 2.0. 1, 2 times 10 to the 7 multiplied by my change in length, right? Or the amount it's being compressed by. So simply divide out the 2.12, all right, times 10 times 10 to the 7th, divide out the 2.12 times 10 to the 7th, and lo and behold, we finally find the compression value. So 2.05 divided by 2.12 times 10 to the 7th, and we get a value of 9.67 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. That is the amount at which it will be compressed, the hardwood that is. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. This problem was a little challenging, right? A lot to think about. Um, how to draw the picture is really the toughest part, in my opinion. Once you have the picture set up, uh, you know, finding those forces now just becomes a matter of doing simple trigonometry. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Really uh, appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.